Well, um, uh, of course, we express our sadness at the loss of uh, His Excellency. And um, I'll tell you what I wrote in the tribute today. He was a president to the max, in every sense of the word, a great son of Trinidad and Tobago, and we are very proud of the work he did and of his achievements. So to his family, our condolences, and of course, may his soul rest in peace. As I said, I met him first when I was uh, graduating from the Hugh Wooding Law School. I was um, the valedictorian for the class of that year. And um, I gave the valedictory speech and he met me afterwards and congratulated me. But he said words that truly inspired me. He said, you have a long way to go. You will have a great life and great achievements. And I was very inspired by that. And thereafter, of course, um, when I became the first woman opposition leader, he gave me my instrument. We had a very good conversation then when I became the first woman prime minister. He was also the one who gave the instrument. So he has been very involved in my academic life, first as a student and then as a, in public life in, in the parliament, opposition leader, prime minister. His words of wisdom have always been good. We had regular consultations when he was president and I always took his very sage, wise advice in guiding us through some rocky times. Um, we are all deeply saddened by the passing of one of our most beloved presidents, uh, George Maxwell Richards, whom we all fondly you know, regard as our President Max because of his down-to-earth nature. He really enjoyed the joie of life in Trinidad and Tobago and he really embodied what of all of our citizens really ascribe to. So he was a very hard worker, a dedicated man. And he left a legacy at the university and in the country and really we'd like to give our condolences to his family and all those who are really close to him. The nation really is in a state of mourning at his passing. We continue to extend condolences to the family, friends and the wider citizenry of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Max was someone who was well grounded, even as a leader, even as a well accomplished man. I think it's a good example for other persons who are involved in public life to remain grounded. He was one that was not just a spectator but a participator in our cultural, especially carnival activities. My personal memory was not having a one-on-one -on -one direct interaction with him but I was at Max and Friends one year and I overheard him talking to the person who had the cleaning contract and he was there in his jovial mood and said to the person, you know, allow your workers to partake in the festivities you know have some drinks non-alcoholic of course have some eat and let them be a part of it so when i heard that i said wow this person is someone who's really grounded and in touch with people you know so he will be fondly missed and we continue to say the nation has lost someone great but we continue to celebrate his life we have lost a great soul it's a generation that i wish we could replicate and we should not just look on in history on, on his life and many others like him in the past but try to emulate because I truly believe that our heroes having passed their life message is one for our future and I think that our citizens must rise to the level of service the dignity and the sense of joie de vivre that he exercised um, because I could tell you now even in his passing whenever I think of him it brings a smile to my heart and I just hope for his family and all of those who grieve to know full well that in time grief can be replaced with joy for our life having been well lived. Okay, and any memories you'd like to share? Anything stand out to them about yeah. dealings oh. with uh, uh, Of course, um, whenever you would meet with him, he always had a, a funny line or a, 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 a very happy disposition that was infectious. And I think the country needs that more now than ever. So there are many occasions when I experience that with him and always a very um, witty personality. So, you know, I, I, I can't go into all the details, but I, except to say that we need a sense of humor in this country if we are to go far and a sense of dignity at the same time. Right? God bless. Some tributes there to the late former president, George Maxwell Richards. Now, earlier we were speaking to Karen Cozier Philip down at the parliament building where there is the viewing of the body of president former President Richards, lying in state at the Parliament building. Karen, we understand now that the public, the general public, is allowed to enter the Parliament. What's the mood like, been like? 
This is CTV's continued coverage of the state funeral for the former president, the late George Maxwell Richards. We are outside of Tower D of the Parliament Building, uh, where the members of members of the public continue to file past his casket, of course, to. Uh, pay their respects, of course, and to sign the condolence book. Now, these doors were opened at about 12 o'clock this uh, afternoon, and they will stay open until about 5 o'clock or so, uh, so members of the public can continue to come here and pay their respects to the former president. Uh, a short while ago, a large contingent from the government, uh, members of parliament, ministers, a large contingent from the government, uh, came uh, to, to pay their respects and, of course, to sign the condolence book. Uh, we, we spoke with um, Leader of Government Business in the uh, Parliament, Camille robinson Regis, and she said this was a, a sad day, not only for the government, of course, but uh, for Trinidad and Tobago, to lose someone, uh, the stature of President George Maxwell Richards. Uh, she said that the government has not yet decided on what uh, type of tribute, uh, fitting tribute they can pay uh, to honor Mr. Uh, Richards' legacy. Of course, they will have discussions with uh, the family on what they can do to honor his legacy. Um, as members of the public continue to file past here, of course, we earlier uh, spoke to the opposition leader. Uh, she said that she recalls his, her times with him as prime minister, that he always had a, a listening ear. Of course, there was an emotional moment uh, before these doors were opened to the public as a Dr. Jean Ram John Richards, the wife of the late president, a former president, George Maxwell Richards, got up to leave. She uh, went towards the casket and you could see the emotion in her face and of course she broke down in some tears and she had to be uh, assisted uh, uh, to back towards her chair and, and then back and then outside towards uh, the uh, car that was waiting on her. So of course it's it's a somber time, it's, it's a sad time here as Trinidad and Tobago mourns the loss of the fourth president of the country, uh, the late George Maxwell Richards. I'm Karen Kozer Philip reporting outside Tower D for C News. Thank you so much, Karen. And you can continue to watch and listen in, listen to watch CTV and listen in on Talk City 91.1 FM for continued coverage of the state funeral uh, for the former president, George Maxwell Richards, as it continues. Today we have viewing at the International Waterfront Center in the Parliament Building. Tomorrow, the um, Professor um, Maxwell, George Maxwell Richards will lie in state at the National Academy for the Performing Arts. And Wednesday would be the funeral service from 10 a.m. on the morning. I'm Stacey on Providence. Do stay tuned. <laughs>